This episode of Bulletproof Cashflow is brought to you by Realty Dynamics. Learn how people like you can build substantial passive income while creating wealth for the long term through real estate investing. Visit rdyne.com. That's r d y n e.com. And now I'm developing and building senior assisted livings for $16 million from ground up construction, about 88 to 94 units. Augustino. So I mm-hmm. don't do it 200, 300, 400. I'm not into it. I don't want to put elevators in there. I want courtyards. My partner and I, actually, he had the, built the model already. He's been doing it for 10 years. So I just joined him. That's what happened. Working because you want to, not because you have to, is financial freedom. And we want to help you create that. Welcome to the Bulletproof Cashflow Show. We're going to teach you how to achieve lifetime financial freedom through real estate investment. Your host is a multifamily syndicator and property developer. He's done deals reaching into the hundreds of millions of dollars. You'll hear from experts in all aspects of real estate investment, finance, finance, development, and management. Everything you need is right here. This is the Bulletproof Cashflow Show. And this is your host, Augustino Pintus. Hey, everyone. It's Augustino. At the time of this recording, I've interviewed well over 400 guests on Bulletproof Cashflow. Now, I can confidently say that positivity is a cornerstone of every single entrepreneur's success. Now, it's really important to stay positive to really overcome the tough times, even when it seems that we're in our darkest moments. Now, today's guest knows all about this. He came to the United States with only $7 in his pocket and a dream. Now, he's a real estate investor, syndicator, international best-selling author of two books, and the host of three podcasts. He's also built a portfolio of over 6,500 units amounting to over $650 million in the multifamily, senior assisted living, and hospitality arenas. Now, he's also passionate about helping others achieve financial freedom and is currently focused on, on giving back to others who have given us so much more uh, th- throughout our lives. And uh, he's, he's also... Um, He's also uh, doing other things in terms of really helping the people in the assisted living uh, arena as well. So with all that, I'd like to welcome Vinny Chopra to the show. Vinny, buddy, thanks for coming on, man. Thank you, Agustino. Thank you so much. I appreciate you inviting me, and I hope I can bring value to your audience from that. Well, you know, I, I've studied your stuff from afar, and I know you well. I'm not worried about that at all. <laughs> so, guys, if you like what Vinny has to say, you can reach him via his contact page at vinnychopra.com. Of, of course, as always, we'll include a link in the description. Okay, Vinny, go ahead and tell the listeners a little bit about your journey. How did you get started? Surely, you know, I'm from India originally, six siblings, and, uh, you know, lived in a one-bedroom apartment, brother, say eight people over there in New Delhi, India. I always was breaking toys and things to find out what's behind, you know, what makes them tick. So I became an engineer from there. I always wanted to, in India, you become an engineer or a doctor or something. So I became a mechanical engineer. I know you're an electrical engineer. Yeah, we yeah. were just talking and I worked for a very big company, Reliance Group, which is called in Bombay, came here to do my MBA in marketing. I thought engineering and marketing, I can make a good living in this land of opportunity. So what happened was when I came to George Washington University, my friend said, Vinnie, what are you doing for summer? I said, I don't know. I just arrived from India, thick accent, everything. He says, you know, I sold books. Would you like to sell encyclopedias and educational books and Bibles? I said, let's do it. And that's what happened, Augustine. You know, I was able to sell books door to door, knocking on doors, 13 hours a day. Wow. What? You might <laughs> ask me. Wow. 80 hours. 80 hours a week we worked. Six days a week we worked, actually, as college students, you know. And that company started doing this 1855. I mean, they're still doing it, by the way, you know, in a smaller scale. But anyway, that got me so excited about sales, brother. I just said, you know, do I want to stay in the uh, relationship building, sales business, marketing business, or do I stay in engineering? So my heart said, let's just stay in sales and marketing 
So I graduated from George Washington University, became public speaker and fundraiser, motivational speaker, and then started investing in real estate. That's how I got into real estate, you know, way back, about 40 years back. Wow, a while. You know, it's funny because uh, door-to-door sales is probably the, one of the toughest sales things you could possibly do. I think that, what is it, Sarah Blakely? Uh, she started in, in door-to-door sales, selling copiers, I think. Mm-hmm. She's the founder of uh, Spanx, right? She started mm-hmm. the same thing. She's a billionaire now. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very, very tough go. You really have to uh, develop some very thick skin. I'm sure it wasn't easy at first, right? It's probably very, very hard. A lot of rejection, I would imagine, right? Lots of rejection, slamming of doors, you know, when you're going. And I didn't have a car. I had just come from India, so I was walking. So one of your team member drops you in the area. That's how it works. And then you got this bag, you know, tugging around and you don't have to, you know, I mean, nowhere to go. You're just walking door to door to door to door and, you know, all that and have a little lunch. And then they come back at 930 at night, pick you up. (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's some that's some hard work. That's some hard work. So so good. So you know what? And it's funny because um, at one point, even even in the bulletproof cash flow archives, uh, we yes. for a while we covered sales and we covered you know, as part of our capital raising, I guess, uh, series that we put together. And um, you know, people underestimate how important sales and marketing really are yeah. to the capital raising game. And I have to imagine oh. that that experience serves you to this very day, but also served you getting into your first deal, right? Because, I mean, obviously, you know, to, you have to, to get to 6,500 units, you have to have deal number one, right? To, so <laughs> let's, let, let's talk a little bit about that. So how, how did you get into that first one? Totally. You know, actually, uh, we bought a duplex. You know, we had a lot of single family homes. Then my wife and I decided, we said, you know, we got to start scaling it up, right? And then we still own the duplex, by the way. But my first unit was a 14 unit for $180,000, literally. So you got to get started, you know, 14 units in Odessa, Texas. You know, it's called Trilogy or something apartments, like a U shape, you know, single story and just 14 units. That's all it was. So you're right, you know, by giving that knowledge of not taking rejection personally. Aha, that's the word. Never take rejection personally because that person you are talking to, they may not have the right resources or time or, you know, just the right time for them to, you know, get into happily involved in your, if it's an investment or sales of a product or whatever, right? So never take it personally, but also take it positively that if they are asking questions, it means they are intrigued by it, what you're presenting. And everybody's a salesperson. I mean, I did do Dale Carnegie. I went on Toastmasters International, which is very, very good organization. Again, hopefully, you know, some of the audience might be looking into those because that's why I use my inflection of voice and eyes and, you know, hands and all that. That came from there. But the key thing is you got to really look at perspective or investor, like you mentioned, right? So, you got to be a consultant as a, a just information giver to the investor. You got to educate them about what syndication is, what is entailed in buying this property. That biggest fear they have is would I get my money back? First of all, if I give you 50,000, would I get my 50,000 back after five years? You tell me. What are your you know, projections, are they very, very uh, loose projections or conservative projections or very liberal, let's say that. Liberal is the better word. So you got to let them know that it's the SEC ruled field, Securities and Exchange Commission. They are the watchdog to keep everybody honest, transparent, with integrity, so that you're answering a lot of questions which are in the investor's mind. So we got to get into their mind. And just like, you know, when we go to the beach, I always see that example. You know, when people walk on the beach, it's got, you know, sand up and down and everything. That's very similar 
in the investor's mind, they're thinking they got so many bad uh, stories, let's say, you know, uh, of losing money or they were not treated well. So you've got to uncover all those things and level the ground. I say that, right? Ask lots and lots of questions so that they're able to open their heart out after first or second visit with us. And then you ask them, you know, how do you diversify? What's your risk profile? All those kind of things. I just kind of got on a big train here. No, 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 it's good. As you asked. <laughs> hey, Augustino here, and I would love to connect directly with you. Text the word books to 844-428-1344 to receive weekly book recommendations from me. Well, you know, that's good, though, because I want to explore that a little more. I, want, I definitely want to talk about some of the, the capital raising component, because I know in the green room, we're talking about all the other things that you're doing aside from multifamily, which is really interesting. But before we go on to that, you know, you, you had said something that's very important. The sales and marketing stuff, obviously, the marketing stuff you had from your education yeah. at George Washington. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it didn't end there. But Dale Carnegie. Toastmasters. I mean, and you, you continue to study sales. And this is one thing that I've mentioned on, on our show. Uh, and, and it's, it's worth em- emphasizing here right now is that you, you don't, you don't just stop training when it comes to sales yeah, and marketing, because no. this, this is a sales job. Basically, this is because you're, yeah. you're, you're the face of a brand, right? Yeah. Just like I am you're yeah. bulletproof, right? Don't same you. thing. It's the same thing, you know, and uh, you, I'm, I'm assuming you still study, you still train on, on sales and marketing. Oh, right? big times, big yeah. times. Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm still, you know, I mean, I read a lot, a lot of books. I mean, podcasts. I'm always looking for cutting edge techniques and PowerPoint presentations and how to really give my investors really nicely, how to have best of the best newsletters, how to present myself in my quarterly meetings with the investors, how to give, you know, I don't do too many webinars when I raise money because I have so many investors now who have seen my closing of the deals and returns mm-hmm. have been given to them. So they are very happy. I just raised like 9 million in nine days. What? I didn't give a single webinar. It was only just the packet and the email and the pictures and other stuff that I sent to them, they click, 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 click and look at it. And then they soft commit and then hard commit, you know, and that's how we do it. So essentially, you're right. This is not a stagnant thing. You are learning and you're using your skills and getting better every day, every day. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what's also important to note here, too, is that raising money uh, raising nine million in nine days didn't happen. It actually didn't take nine days. It took it took twenty years. It took twenty years yeah, exactly. To, exactly. to get to nine days, right? So it's like many people hear that and they say, "Well, I want to do that too." And it's like, "Well, yeah. hold up, hold up a second here," you know, because there's a whole lot of mistakes. I'm sure. I'm sure there's things that you. I know. I know there's things I've said, and I'm like, "Damn, uh-huh. why did I say that?" You know, it's kind of like mm-hmm. I I'm, almost every day for me, right? But I'm sure. That we've all, I'm sure that there's been instances where you're like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have said that, or that doesn't make any sense, or whatever, right? It happens to everybody, right? You learn. Oh, totally, totally. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'll just, you know, definitely, brother. I mean, I have written those two books, you know, like you said, and I'm writing my third one, which is Senior Living Investing Made Easy because it's a renter's nation. There's a huge demand, like you and I talked about in senior housing. And I'm in the assisted living and memory care side of the, business but that's the third book but the key thing is you know you are always trying to perfect your system Mm. you know and and talk to your audience it could be investors could be brokers could be lenders could be any kind of people right you got to be better today than yesterday you're so right and then there are so many mistakes i have made you have made everybody makes but it's the positive attitude that will get you from point A to point B. See, many times we make mistakes and then we go in a spiral down and we beat up ourselves. Why did I say that? Or why did it happen? Why did that you know, investor didn't go with me, right? The key thing is to just accept it. Just accept that instant and then let it be there faintly on the other side, but concentrate on what can I do next to remedy that, right? You know? 
I mean, that's all about it. You cannot be positive all the time, but you can slowly and slowly, slowly start working where the negatives don't bother you that much. Everybody's got ups and downs in life. You know, there's no straight, uh, you know, road at all, but it's how we react to it, right? Yeah. No, it's a, hey, listen, it's like, it's, you know, I go to the gym every day and uh, it isn't like you get big muscles on day one. You know, it's, it's something you have to work on. Yeah. You have to work on it every day. Yeah. It's the same thing goes with positivity. It's, uh, you yeah. know, listen, there's bad yeah. stuff that happens to us. And if, and, and I was the same way. I, I didn't be get to, uh, to, to everything that we've done uh, overnight mm-hmm. either. And it took um, to fix the mindset. The mindset was broken very first thing. Yeah. Once you fix the mindset, yeah. Then it's a whole different yeah. journey, you know. But uh, for for many many people, it's uh, it's really getting into the right mindset, the right the mindset of positivity, the mindset of yes, it can be done, the mindset of you know what, mm-hmm. you, you suck at something, someone called you out on it, learn from it, let it go, and just mm-hmm. focus on what you can change. You know, it's it sounds harsh, but it's the truth, right? And it's the truth. It's just 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 how it is, you know. And it's, <laughs> it takes time. It takes time. You it know, just absolutely. it takes time. It really does. It's like taking that step, you know, slowly, slowly, slowly. Like we didn't get on the bicycle just quickly, right? I mean, when we are born or whatever, it takes time to crawl. And then we start, you know, taking some, you know, people around and then we walk. Same thing is true in our life also. Attitude-wise, if we are very negative, we got to take those baby steps to figure it out why I'm negative, right? And and how can I take, because brain is so small. It's big, but it's small, right? The mm-hmm. thing is, we have that subconscious, which has got reels after reels after reels after reels in our mind, in our brain. You know, it just brings us to the negative much quicker than the positive. And we always try to undermine you know, where we are going, let's just, you know, not do this because this happened to us, right? But if we can try to be a little bit positive and have a positive spin on a negative situation, slowly, 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 the mind, and then again, it's again, listening to the positivity messages, which will also get us into that frame of mind. But you're so right. Mindset is the big thing. Like Zig Ziglar said, Jim Rohn said, all our great mentors, Tony Robbins says, you know, state of mind, you could change it right away. It's all the positive, small, small incrementals, which bring us a, makes us a better person. That's all it is to it. You know, if it yeah. can take us a little bit less time to deal with the negative situation and more time in focusing the positive results or how we can overcome it, it's going to change our life, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that uh, yeah. the, the positive mindset, that mm-hmm. um, that growth mindset is really necessary to yes. raise capital. You got to, it's, it's, it's one of the, raising capital, at least, at least the perception anyway, for, for someone even early in the early stages of getting into this business, is mm-hmm. it's a very daunting task, you know. It's um, it is. It it's is. very tough, and, uh, and 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 part of it is like, listen, you've written books on it. I've written books on it. All, everything from you know, put put together the website. You got to look the part. You have to sound like you know yeah. what you're doing. You have to sound credible. Okay, great. You put all that aside. Let's say, for instance, someone does all those things. They build the website. They cut their mm-hmm. hair. They 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 put on a nice suit. Or they, and they they dress well. They get their nails cleaned. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they so they do all that. Mm-hmm. If all, all things being equal, you even put together a business plan that shows mm-hmm. what you're going to do. You're still going to get a lot of no's. You're yeah, a ton of no's, <laughs> a lot of no's, right? And I think to your point, you have to stay very very positive to overcome it because you're you're probably going to hear a hundred no's before you find your first yes. You know. I want to take a pause from today's show to share something that I've been encountering. As I speak to many investors, there's this concern, and the concern is centered around the inflation we've been experiencing and the devaluation of our currency. Now, we've seen some of the highest inflationary periods over the past 30 years. That's up over 8%. Economists actually believe that inflation is closer to 20%. Some say it's even more. Now, What does this mean for you? Well, it means that money that is sitting in your bank account or self-directed IRA that's not invested in physical assets that hedge against inflation are losing buying power. 
That means that every minute, every second, that dollar is becoming less valuable. You see this every day. You see this in the groceries you buy, the gasoline you buy, everyday items that you're buying on a daily basis are becoming more and more expensive, and you're using a less powerful dollar to buy these items, meaning that dollar is losing value if it isn't put into a property that produces cash flow, just like real estate does. Now, our team here at Bulletproof Cashflow has put together a series of weekly webinars that cover real estate investing like multifamily, net lease, and real estate development. Now, these are purely educational webinars. In these webinars, we talk about why real estate offers a powerful opportunity right now and why it makes sense to invest in these assets today. So if you're interested in real estate or want to have the opportunity to get involved as a hedge against inflation yourself, I encourage you to go to bulletproofcashflow.com slash webinars. That's bulletproofcashflow.com slash webinars. Now you go there, these, these webinars are 45 minutes and they cover different topics every week. We go over the things you need to know to avoid some of the common pitfalls when it comes to investing while getting you prepared to invest your paper dollars into a real physical asset. Now, if you can't make the webinars, just go ahead and register and we will send you a recording that you can watch at any time. And by the way, these webinars are entirely free. There's no cost to you. This is just something that we do to educate, educate our folks out there. So if you're enjoying this episode, please like and subscribe uh, to Bulletproof Cashflow. It helps the channel tremendously when you do. Now, let's go ahead and get back to the show. It's, you know, it's like, I'm so glad you said it. Yeah, I'm no, so glad, you know. I just, you know, what I find is that, again, it has taken me time. One thing, one attitude, which has really helped me a lot, and it's been written and talked about. Oh boy, this! I'm in the backyard of my home. You know, some truck is going in the little the road here. But the thing is, if we can really learn, learn to love the nose. Let me say that. Learn to love the nose. How could we do that? Is if everybody listening or watching us, if you could just look at okay. If somebody says yes, one investor says yes, and they put 50000 or 100000 what's the outcome of that? So let's just say we hopefully in the next three to five years in acquisition fee, in asset management fee, in other fees and property management, you know, all that. And then equity gain. Let's say we realize it does. I don't know what number it could be, but let's just say. 50,000 investment might bring us 30,000 or whatever, right? So it means that one yes got us to that 30,000 returns. Yeah. And then we also should put under that, you know, uh, investor, maybe their family and friends and colleagues might come also. You know, if we made them really good money and returns, they'll talk about it. I always have looked at one investor as times 20. Somehow, I read a book, you know, many, many years back. You never look at one investor as one, but you look at their whole tree. If you give good water and give them and nurture them, they will tell more people and more people. Like one investor, my first investor has given me $39 million. What? Just one investor in my case. I'm sure many of you have similar, but the thing is, you got to just say, now, if I will take 20 demos or 20 calls to get one investor, so you divide that $30,000 by 20. So now each no has the same value as the yes. That's right. That's so right. so that's a good way to do that, you know. And you could even do it for the whole year. Like for if you're going to make 400000 for example, I'm just saying that, then, you know, we will look at, okay, how many investors does it take for me to make that kind of earnings, our company and everything? And then we can look at what's the ratio of, is it like 10 out of one? So we could take the whole year income divided by the number of yeses and the noes together. That's what I'm trying to say metaphorically, because then we can say, you know what? I got the no glad because I'm getting near to the yeses, see? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, you know, the people, and people overlook that part too. They, um, mm -hmm. 
the thing is, though, it's like there's there's one investor that I'm already talking to. He's, he's investing some money with us. He introduced me to five of his friends, and all five of yep. these people are going to invest with us. You know, I know, I know, we'll get them over the line. Yeah, that's that's how it works. I love it. That's yes. how it works. You know, and um, it, it just but it took a while to find that gentleman. You know, it took a while. Mm-hmm. It didn't happen overnight. You know, so to your point, yeah, you got to get through a bunch of no's before you find the yes. You know, and and um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's a big part of, of raising money, and it's and it's not easy. You know, it's, it's certainly not it's, easy. If it were easy, everybody would be doing it. Everybody, everybody will be doing it. You are so <laughs> right. right. I think just having the service minded attitude, just making sure that every meeting we are doing for any new investor, we are giving them and giving them and giving them and teaching them, giving education, I call it, you know, and making them really comfortable with the material. Are we just throwing numbers at them? Or are we really asking them questions, trial questions? D- do you understand what I'm trying to kind of explain? And giving them parts of the business, which is going to take care of their anxiety and their risks, which they are thinking in, you know, what are the risks in this deal? What, uh, what are some of the things they have gone through with? So there's a good presentation, I say, right? Credibility yeah. kick, we call it where we have this good PowerPoint with good bullet points and we explain slowly, slowly to them. Hmm? Yeah, I think, I think part of, I think what's what's come out more recently anyway, especially with this whole social media thing, is authenticity. Yeah. Authenticity, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's um, yeah. you know, you, you really, I mean, part of it is, there is, there is the part of, the, of the, the side of the coin of make sure the deal is a solid deal, right? That goes without mm-hmm. saying. Uh, the deals yeah. I do, the deals you do, they're good, solid deals. That's, those are the only exactly. ones I do. I don't do high risk stuff. I never do high totally. risk stuff. They're good, solid totally. deals. So I feel totally. good about selling this deal to somebody. You know, I, I, yeah. I don't feel like I have to like beg and plea. If they don't want to do the deal, yeah. don't do the deal, you know, it doesn't matter. Exactly. Um, yeah. And, and, but it's like, it, it should not be a, um, a hard sell. Like, and, and nor should exactly. you be part of it. And you shouldn't even really promise them. Oh, I guarantee I'm going to yeah. give you. X. Oh no! Oh my God! No, no, no! Don't ever do that. <laughs> never use the word. Never use the word guarantee ever. Never ever, use ever. guarantee. You're so right. Hey, yeah. I know a lot of times they will ask us. I mean, I know my clients or investors have said, "So you guarantee?" I said, "No, no, 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 no. There is no guarantee whatsoever. These are projections on the best assumptions, conservative assumptions we are doing." So that's very true. You bet, yeah. you bet. Yeah. And also really sharing the concept of syndication and bringing SEC in our conversation is very good thing because Securities and Exchange Commission, do you know what that agency is? To ask them and then say, let me share with you because with the 1933 law, you know, and everything when they did this, we don't, you know, register with, SEC ruling, but we do the exemption. And we have to say that also, kind of making them really understand what we are trying to do. And they are the watchdog, you know, to keep the interest of the investors intact, that they are not ripped off and things like that. And that's what is good for investors to understand that you are abiding by the rules and regulations, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, it it demonstrates. that's, this is a real. This is real. This is a real deal here. Exactly. This is not a fly exactly. by night guy selling mm-hmm. something. That, like you know, mm-hmm. uh, this is an actual deal registered with the government, registered with the SEC. Yeah. And you know, if anybody mm-hmm. doesn't know this, you don't miss. You don't mess with the IRS and the SEC. Yeah, the so two guys yep. you don't mess with. Yeah. <laughs> don't mess with those guys. Yeah. FBI yes. might be okay, but not those two. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you know, explaining that you know we buy the asset yeah. in a single purpose entity and we can explain to them why because we are on the loan our investors are not on the loan they have no risk in that category we are on the loan and we are the general partners but we are taking care of the loan the combining all the deals uh, getting the money ready negotiating the deal and 70% of the profits of that property is going to be given to investors. We got to say that 
Because once they think, oh my gosh, so you are doing all this, you are putting the deal together, you are underwriting it, you are negotiating it, and you are going to run it for five to seven years without our investment, I mean, our involvement in it, right? Limited partners, all that, and you are keeping 30% only, 70, the majority of the profitability is coming to them, cash flow as well as equity gains. And then the LLC is a pass-through entity. See, explaining that is so important also that the K1 they're going to get, it's going to show the property is going to be making profit, but there is some one line depreciation, which we do auxiliary depreciation. So kind of trying to make it simpler for them to understand that not only they're going to get the benefit of the money, cash flow and the equity gain, but the negative losses is going to offset their passive negative losses, you know, or they can accumulate for the next five years. CPAs can do it for them. And then when the equity gain comes back, because we have to recapture the gains, right, from the bottom, all the depreciation. So I think kind of educating them is the main thing. Majority of the things I've been doing, and I have about 460 or so investors, I have not met them much at all. Maybe 30, 40, I met them belly to belly, but rest is all on Zoom or Skype or WebEx I used to use, right? And to be truthful, Asked, you know, I will record. I'll ask them, would you mind if I recorded this and I'll give you the link back to you? Wow. So in other words, that is a great way also to kind of let them read it and listen to it again because not everybody grasps the information very quickly, you know. So yeah. that has helped me a lot. My investors have stayed with me over the last 15 years and open their wallet from 50,000 to 100. Actually, I set a goal at 100, right from my first deal. I've done 39 syndications now, you know, 39 or so. And they have stayed at 100,000. Then I started doing tier investing seven years back Mm -hmm. or eight years back. What that means is if you do this at 100 to 249, you get 7%. If you do 250, to 499 you get 8% if you do 500 or above you get 9% cash flow and the yeah. equity gain it's like you know 13% irr to 15% irr and that i started that opened up my business like crazy because my investors then started to jump to the next level and next level and i have so many investors who have like 5 million 4 million with me now 3 million with me, 2 million with me, one investor, because they are able to pull their retirements and others and all that, you know? So I think that's a good technique if everybody listening or watching us, you know, try to do the tier investing. That is a great way to do it. Yeah. And I think it's also worth noting too, and you mentioned this already, Mm -hmm. but it's worth reiterating. Mm -hmm. It's like, much it's a, for the first for someone listening to this for the first time they don't necessarily understand depreciation they don't necessarily understand accelerated depreciation they don't understand yeah. what uh mm-hmm. what a self-directed ira is i mean mm-hmm. i didn't even know what a self-directed ira was when i had one you know when like and i was yeah. working in corporate i had i had all this yeah. cash stuffed in a self yeah. and an ira i had no idea i'd be able to to take that cash and, and direct it on my own to to my own yes. in, to my own investments. That certainly, you know, um, uh, who is it? Uh, green, whoever it is that has the the, the IRAs, they're not going to tell you. No one's going to tell you yes. that. Why, why no, would they? No, right? No, no. You know, and yeah. HR wouldn't tell you that. They knew because it, half the time they don't even know about it. You know, so it, a lot of it is that my point is there's a lot of education that goes into this, and that's what you, you you touched on this a bit ago. There's a whole lot of education. And then when you do finally get in front of them, the, the, that person might be hearing it from you directly yeah. for the, like, for the, maybe, maybe they've, they've watched your stuff and they, they hear, they heard you say it before or they read it in the book somewhere, but now to hear it again, 
it clicks. Now it clicks. Now I get it. Now I understand, you know, because you're there to answer the questions. And maybe they'll invest today, maybe they'll invest in the next deal. But the point is that you, you got to get in front of these folks. You know, got to get in front of so them. So true. So true. Yeah. Agustino, yeah. You're so right, brother. I've done many webinars with uh, Advanta and EQRP. Mm-hmm. Damien Lupo is a good friend yeah. of mine. Yeah, Damien's and with a good guy. Equity Trust and all. All these people, I want to spread the knowledge that from Wall Street, I mean, they will never tell you that you could take your retirement fund into self-directed IRA, 401k, SEP, and Roth IRA and all that. That's one crusade I'm on. Senior assisted living is the other crusade. As you know, last three years, I've been spending a lot of time in getting people to really look into it. It's a 30-year roadmap. For the next 34 years, we're going to need so many housings in the assisted living, senior living, memory care, dementia, that there is a huge. And now the new one, as you're ready, my third one crusade, I'm going to get on the ball and doing a lot of podcasts and shows is the hotel investments. Mm. What we found out, even the limited partners are active income. What? From the hotel, even though you are investing as a limited partner, but the active through the tax code, the investment is an active loss for you. Wow, which I didn't know that. So I'm having a lot more interviews with CPAs now and telling as I'm getting more and more into hotels, telling my investors, first of all, the cost segregation is humongous. In hotels, 80% of your investment is written off in the first year, 70 to 80% done, not 25. In multifamily, it's only 25% of the total deal. In hotels, it's 75 to 80%, brother. So that means there is such a big loss. And if somebody's making a million dollar income, W2 income or bonuses or anything as active income, the losses from the hotel industry, their investment, that can be taken off their active income without being a real estate professional. So this is a known fact that a lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't know. And that is something I'm on a crusade right now, you know, to bring it out. And I have my good friend, Ted Lanzaro, is coming to my mastermind. I teach also every Wednesday with group of people, group mentoring, I call it, with my students and investors who are learning the tricks of the trade. On Wednesday, I've been doing it for three years now. What? Wow. Every Wednesday, wow. 4 o'clock to 5.30, brother, I have thousands and thousands of hours of recordings. Every Wednesday, I do that, you know, and it's been fun. It's been fun. People bring deals, people bring their, you know, questions, and we are meeting people and all that, yeah, group nice. mentoring. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, and it's free, right? Yeah, it's free uh, so for a few times, but then after that, they could come in if they want to, you know, go into my academy. I've got 1,000 lectures in my academy. I've wow. got everything I've designed in my whole, at least, you know, 15 years. I give it on a silver platter. I think it's cost because of all these costs of putting it together. We are giving it for 1997 or something. My team was telling me, you know, everything, yeah. everything that I put good. together, you know. And yeah, good deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and if you have if you have guys like like Ted and Damien, I know both those guys. Those are great guys. Oh, I, I know them personally. They're, they're good dudes. They're really good dudes. They're, they're great really. people. And SEC attorneys, my good friends are Kim Lisa Taylor, Gene Trowbridge, Damien, sure. you know, of course, and Dugan yeah. Kelly, Lisa Hahn, Nick McGruger. I mean, you name it, right? I've and Jillian Cazoli. I've interviewed everybody, you yeah. know, in the SEC world also, and then brokers and lenders. So, you know, if anybody needs, just Google Vinnie Chopra and the name of the person. Hopefully, you'll come to that interview right away. You know, right, that's and right. you'll go to that website. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, I, I know with this crusade then on, on senior living and hotels, mm-hmm. uh, I, I have to imagine a lot of that 
movement into those two specific asset classes is because of what you're seeing right now in multifamily. We've got a whole lot of cap rate compression time. taking place, right? So, Big time, so brother. Big time. What, what, yeah. what do you see? What do you think is going to happen on the multifamily side? Because I mean, like, like we're talking in the green room, we're doing a lot more development. We're doing a lot more net lease. I'm not saying we're not yeah. going to do any, any multifamily stabilized multifamily acquisitions, but it's become very difficult to find a deal that makes sense, you know, because I think many of these sellers are still stuck like like a year ago where the debt is not the same anymore. The, the, the terms are not no. the same anymore. Right. So wh- what, what, what do you think is going to happen here? What do you what do you predict? I'm so glad what you're saying. I've been selling a lot of my portfolio at the peak because compression of the, you know, like you said, cap rate. I've sold 27. I'm selling another one. I bought for 52 million in Orlando, selling for 64 million. I'm even selling one right now. I bought for 34 million, 750 with my partner in Austin, 63 million. What? Nice. In year and a half from 35 to 63. So it's the high time to sell. But the thing is, I've only bought one last year and one this year. It's becoming so difficult. Like you said, 15 people in the best and finals and everybody's outbidding everybody else. So that's why I caught on to the senior assisted living three years back because I knew this market is changing. And now I'm developing and building senior assisted livings for $16 million from ground up construction, about 88 to 94 units. Augustino. So I hmm. don't do it 200, 300, 400. I'm not into it. I don't want to put elevators in there. I want courtyards. My partner and I, actually, he had the, built the model already. He's been doing it for 10 years. So I just joined him. That's what happened. So I'm no guru in developments, but I'm learning. But he has done it, 30 of these, you know. So Essentially, what we do is we put three to four courtyards with swing pool, with putting green, with waterfall functions and big walkways and very nice, you know, uh, vegetable gardens and things so that our seniors can really enjoy. Inside the community, August, you know, we put uh, we put uh, spa and salon and dining halls, of course, big and uh, high ceiling, uh, you know, chandeliers. And then we got library and movie theater in there, grand pianos and uh, billiard rooms and, uh, you know, uh, sunrooms and uh, bistros and all. This is in my multifamily senior living. Everything is in there. So it's a resort. It's a resort. And Uh we build it for 17 million. 17, 18 million, let's that's, say, give or take. That's, that's actually pretty the, good. <laughs> 17, very good, million. brother. Really it's a very good price. I mean, if you can build it, yeah, it's you crazy. Know. Well, now, now are, the, are you building the this? The craziest I, thing, the craziest thing I want to see here is that yeah. this 17, 18 million, when I build it in three years, it takes about nine months in getting uh, permits and all that. Yeah, we yeah. build it in about 12 months. That's two years. Then we lease it up, right? So we are are vertically integrated. I'm sorry, I didn't want to cut you off. But the thing is, we are able to get per unit $4,000 average. Oh, yeah. Hold on. So 90 units at 4,000, that's 3.6 million. How many multifamily units you have to buy to get the same revenue on the top? Oh yeah, you figure like a thousand bucks just you know on yeah, the low side. Yeah, you got it. It's like you're multiplying it by four. Three hundred sixty uh, so, units. Three hundred sixty units. No, who, who's managing? Units. Yeah, we yeah, are exactly. We are. So, so yeah. you're, it's like you have your own, like your own management group that does the senior living yes. component. Then yes, got it, yes. got it, yes. got it, got We've it, got it. We've been doing it. Yeah, we have been. I had my also management of the multifamily too. My peak was one hundred fifty three full-time people in my company, Moni wow. Management Group. So everything I bought, we managed it for last, uh, instead of uh, up to the last say, third year, because from third year onwards, from this time forward, uh, we have Bell Partners, Ram Partners, other third party managing, because we cannot afford to keep all the people on our payroll, right? So I downsized it, but we were 
managing everybody. So now in senior living, we are managing ourselves. We have 24 people per per unit, per uh, complex. They are caregivers, 15 or 16 caregivers. There is, you know, a t- executive director, a business manager. There is a nurse. There is a chef and a deputy chef, you know, or assistant chef. And then a maintenance, which we are building brand new. It's 2022 model. It's it's an A plus plus community anyway. Oh, yeah. For 2023, we don't have much maintenance issues at all because we just built it brand new. So it's a wonderful place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and you're not worried about yeah. you know, <laughs> you're not worried about a tenant's boyfriend coming in and, and putting a hole in the mm. window and a door, and you're not worried no. about evictions, you're not worried about any of that stuff. You know, if it's an A plus plus type of asset. I have a very different clientele, you know, so it's... You know, um, it's totally different. I'm so yeah. glad you said it. We do the due diligence on their health because these are 75 years old residents or 80 years or 90 years of age, right? They have to be in a certain format of assisted living, right? ADLs, they call it, activities of daily living. And there is two, you know, they are not able to do then they are qualifying. And they have to also show their revenue, like how much rent they have mm. for next three to five years. So it's a whole different ball game. It's not the same month to month kind of thing like we have to worry about workforce housing. It's somebody who comes into our community. They stay there for 30 days, 30 months, sorry, to three years. Or they get sick, they have to go to hospital or they go to hospice if they die. Right. So it's a whole different clientele, zero concessions, zero delinquency, zero delinquency, brother, every month. And it's also like, you know, you're giving a service experience, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's a very oh, yes. clean operation. I would really recommend lots of people to really look into it because this is the future. This is the future we'll be 89 million, I think, will be a uh, population of 65 plus coming up here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah no, Gen, Gen yeah. X, you know, our generation, Gen they're, 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 com- they're on yeah. the coming up. We're not going to be young and beautiful forever, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> You're right, bro. You're right. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, and then I, I, the hospitality I, also kind of really gets me excited because yes. it's also multi family. At its core, if you think about it, you could change the rents every night, five different rents for the room depends on, I mean, look at $99 rooms are going for $600 in some communities right now. After COVID, people have so much demand of travel. It's just ridiculous. So that's my other avenue. Like you said, diversification, you know, senior living. And then this, uh, you know, we just talked about hotels. You also mentioned it in the green room, you know, that we are doing. And then Bitcoin mining. If people are really into crypto, if it's going to stay, they should really look into that also because Bitcoin mining is huge business I'm getting into and gotten into already. We have, my partner has deployed 87 million into it already, 87 million. Wow. We, this is buying the miners, the computers, supercomputers, brand new, and building them right next to Niagara Falls, right next to the solar energy, right next to the nuclear plant over there in Ohio, where you are, and then in Atlanta, Georgia. Now we are building a big plant in Texas, and we are mining the Bitcoin for $12,000. What? You could sell it for $30,000. Yep. That's a pretty good deal. Pretty good deal. You know? Pretty good and deal. That's why we are able to give great returns to our investors. And it's a 506C, you know, for accredited investors only. Yeah. So I could talk about it a little bit, you know, on the yeah, internet. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. not that I'm selling any security or anything. I just want to be sure. I wrote the book, you know, syndication right, right, right. easy book. So I want to be make sure, you know. But that's something one should look into because diversification is the name of the game. You've got to diversify. I'm into e-commerce also right now, big times. I'm looking into some softwares, into venture capitalists also I've invested into. You know, there are so many different avenues that one can really bring investors' money, 
syndicated money into different avenues to give them results, right? You know? yep, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, I want, we should do a part two because I'd love to talk about how you have <laughs> everything set up because I do know, I do know that when you're syndicating stuff, any types of deals, there's also yes. uh, managing the backside of things, the the administrative yes. and, and the operational side. But we, unfortunately, we can't go into that. I wish we could, but we'll have to yeah. do another, we'll do another well, one. We'll do time. another one next time. Love absolutely, to, love to, absolutely, love absolutely. To, love to. So, um, so for someone listening right now, okay, we've covered a lot of mm-hmm. stuff here today. What sort of bulletproof advice would you offer them to really, you know, decide what they're going to do next and 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 when it comes to their journey in life? You know, I have always felt about, you know, what are we doing today? Move the needle today. I always say that, right? Power of Now through Eckhart Tolle, right? What a great book. Power of Now. We got Mm -hmm. to really be better today. We got to act and move the, you know, I mean, what you're doing, if you're doing 10 units, why not doing 20 units, right? What's your next one? If it's 100 units you got, why not 200 units? Always expand and look at it's in the power of raising money, which is your show. You know, it's totally that power of putting the like minded people together and rejection. Don't worry about it. I mean, once you start becoming very confident in your pitch, I call it pitch, you could actually give your pitch in front of the mirror also. You'll see yourself, your inflection of voice and everything. You put your laptop in front. That's how I learned it, by the way. Yeah. I used to yeah. give myself, you know, demos in the mirror. And I said, Winnie, why are you not doing that? You learn, right? So don't feel bad. But the key thing is take a decision today to move to the next level. That's all I can say. But if you're not into multifamily or into other things we discussed today, because I think there is with the interest rates going higher, I know the compression rate is lower, but it's going to go higher. You know, cap rate has to go higher with this, you know, interest rates getting higher, mortgage amounts getting lower, uh, higher, all that. And in the smaller uh, mom and pop and all, you know, a lot of things happen. I always say you got to play the field to hit the ball, right? You cannot yeah. be outside. You've got to be talking to the brokers in the uh, size that you want to purchase. You should have your money ready first. You should qualify for the loan with the loan broker. And as soon as a good deal comes in, jump into it. And look into senior assisted living. Why not? Even residential senior assisted living. I'm into multifamily side, but you could be into residential also. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, excellent, um, excellent advice. <laughs> and I know you have you have a free you have a free ebook too on, on your website, right? I do, I do. I you please go if you would like to. You know, my book is actually the same three hundred ten pages long. You know, which is international top seller, uh, apartment syndication made easy. I got a lot of accolades on that. You could go on Amazon, buy it, but get a free digital copy. Right there, vinichopra.com. That's V as in Victor, I N N E Y C H O P R A, chopra.com forward slash free book. Just get that free for book. free. And I think if you click on it, even the audio is like $14, but you can get audio for $3 because we put it in a different uh, Google Drive or something. My team did it. So this way you could even get an audio also much cheaper than you know i want yeah. people to just act on it it's got great information yeah 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 but check out guys check out his material he's got really good stuff all right so uh excellent <laughs> well okay guys so listen if uh, you want to reach out to Vinny, you can reach out via his website vinnychopra.com of course check out his material again vinnie has been around for a while now and uh he's done a lot of really really cool things so uh, definitely check out his books. All right. Um, hope you got some insight on, you know, capital raising, especially, but some of the other asset yeah. classes that maybe you ought to consider in the meantime, while, you know, we'll obviously see some cap rate compression on multifamily. I'm not saying ignore multifamily. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, keep your eyes open yeah. for other stuff. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks so much. And I'll see you next episode. You've been listening to the Bulletproof Cash Flow Show. We hope you've enjoyed the show. We know we had fun. Make sure to visit our Apple podcast page and leave us a five-star review. We hope you've gotten some useful and practical information from the show. For real estate coaching, events, and resources, hit up bulletproofcashflow.com. Till next time.
No information in this episode should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Any investment opportunities mentioned on this show are limited to accredited or sophisticated investors. Any investments will only be made with proper disclosure and subscription documentation and subject to all applicable laws. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice.